uh, retired. Oops, hold on. Uh, retired General Alonzo Short. And good morning. Hey, good morning, James and, and, and Leah and Carl my friend Jackson. here. Yeah. Uh, good hey, morning. Man. Good to see. It's good to see you. I've, I've been here a, a, a good little while, worried a little bit about getting the focus and getting a picture, but I got it and you guys look beautiful. Well, so do you. So do you. So do you. Uh, thanks for getting up this morning. And before we get started, uh, I asked the Colonel to give a little perspective, a little soldier's perspective on uh, Memorial Day. Well, you know, Slim, uh, Memorial Day is probably one of my, it's my, my favorite uh, uh, holiday of all of the holidays that we uh, celebrate as far as uh, federal holidays. Because I look at it and you know, I'm a retired nurse and I look at uh, my past and on my past and our country's past. And this is a day that we honor all those who have uh, served, who have uh, put on the uniform to uh, make this day possible. And then we, then we look back and we look at the past, but then we also look at the present. And then we also want to honor those who are in uniform now because we celebrate our uh, countries and our military because one, we have a, uh, a military that is all volunteer. And that is something that stands out amongst all the other uh, countries in the world. And then I look at our future. And, uh, and so, and our future is, is bright. If we get over this, as we were talking before, if we get over this bump in the road of those who want to overthrow our democracy that we are uh, undergoing now. So I go back from a philosophical uh, standpoint of Memorial Day today is I look at past, present, and future. And so in that concept, in that conceptual frame, framework, I celebrate this holiday. So I'm, that might have been tight right there. Yeah, <laughs> we appreciate it. I, you gave us just what I expected. <laughs> Thank you. I really appreciate that. And I want to give a shout out to our cousin, John Gantz. He's watching uh, from mm -hmm. Texas and uh, he's a former Army paratrooper. So uh, uh, Johnny, how you doing? Thanks for getting up early. I know. It must be about one o'clock in the morning there. I, I don't know. But anyway, before we get started with the uh, General uh, Leah, I think oh. we always honor one of our citizens uh, doing these programs. So I believe you have someone that we want to recognize this morning. I do have someone we'd like to recognize this morning. And I am excited because we will recognize the brother of our honored guests on this morning. Um, we, this morning, we, we recognize Harry Lee Short. And Harry's bio begins by, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy by Dr. Martin Luther King. Harry Lee Short, a Portsmouth native was educated in the Portsmouth Public Schools. He graduated from IC Norcom High School where he excelled in the fields of sports, football, baseball, and track and field. Short received his Bachelor of Arts degree in political science from Virginia State University and pursued further studies at Georgia Tech and Old Dominion University. Short is the son of the late Alonzo Short Sr. and Rosa Moore Short. He said he admires his parents more than anyone because they inspired me to accomplish goals regardless of life's obstacles. It's that mantra that has helped him throughout the years in his quest to be the best of whatever you do. Hal's focus, determination, and decision-making have served him well since the young age of 11 when he said that he achieved his greatest life's accomplishment Selecting my life's companion, Lottie. At the age of 11, he selected Lottie. Short and his <laughs> wife are the proud parents of one daughter, Rhonda, and grandparents of two grandsons, Travis and Julian. 
Following a teaching position with the Portsmouth Public School System, Schultz resolved to achieve success extended into his professional life, where for more than 44 years, he worked for the Portsmouth Redevelopment and Housing Authority. Short began his career at the authority in 1972 as redevelopment coordinator and continued his success as director of administrative services, director of administration and management, and director of operations for administration and housing. In January 2009, Short was appointed to the position of executive director, where he directed and oversaw the overall functions of the authority with diligence and passion for working with people particularly the young and the elderly. How played an integral part in changing the housing landscape in the city of Portsmouth. Short is a member of Grove Baptist Church, Portsmouth, Virginia. The legacy that Short wants to leave is that he aspires to leave things better than how he found them. So mm -hmm. in this morning, we are truly excited that we are able to honor Harry Lee Short the brother of our honored guest on this morning. So we are just so happy. And I must say in mentioning Hal and Lottie, he picked his lady at 11. Lottie also served as well in the school system here in the city of Portsmouth. And her sister Katura was responsible for starting uh, PIAC in the city of Portsmouth. So a great family who is giving a lot to the city of Portsmouth. So we are happy to salute Hal on this morning. Well, thank you, Liz. It's funny how that worked out, isn't it? It's funny how that worked out <laughs> this morning. <laughs> yes, and, uh, it's, it's just a part of our mission here on Coffee Talk and making sure we recognize and, and honor uh, citizens of Portland who've done great things, but don't always get the recognition that they uh, deserve. So we uh, thought that was a great opportunity to have the two brothers here <laughs> this morning. And as Matter of fact, uh, their parents lived down the street from me growing up. <laughs> I, I know the general kind of grew up in Mount Hermon, but uh, I think Harry grew up in, in Acadia Heights. Am I correct, correct, General? Well, but I did too. You know, I moved uh, from Mount Hermon uh, to Arcadia Heights. Oh, smart in move. In, in, in 1951. So I, I had some time there with you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, uh, John Gans said to you guys, hoorah, I guess that means something to, to you all. Oh, Lord. Hoorah. 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 Yeah. Hoorah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's and, the old airborne cry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when you're jumping out the plane, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> Perfectly good <laughs> airplane. Yeah. <laughs> Just wanted to say, uh, okay, uh, our special guest, General Short, uh, is here and a uh, graduate of I.C. Norcom. 1957 and Virginia State University. And uh, I wanted to mention that, and we'll, we'll talk more about his military career with uh, the Colonel, but I wanted to mention some of the things, uh, especially something, uh, a, a special moment that I see Norco, uh Well, all of us <laughs> know that a lot of our preparation started right there, uh, as far as preparing you for leadership and, and, and a lot of other things in life there and as well as Virginia State. And um, I wanted and to talk Norfolk about- State, And Norfolk State, young man, but go ahead. And Norfolk State <laughs> and, and Virginia Union and <laughs> University and Elizabeth City. <laughs> but anyway, I want to talk about the uh, uh, general, you had a period when you were playing football. Now, I don't think this has happened since. Didn't you have a uh, season where the defense was unscored on? Unscored on for nine games. For nine games. In the ah. tenth game, in the tenth game, we played Booger T, and they scored on us more than we scored on them. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> <won> the game. <laughs> yeah, but for nine games, for nine games, nobody crossed our goal line. Mm. Wow! Not even a field goal. Not even a field goal. Wow! <laughs> okay, but but oh, by man. mentioning that, and, and and you end up uh, going into the military, but. How significant was uh, your, your days at I.C. Norcom and, and going into uh, uh, Virginia State? I, I, I saw somewhere where you mentioned Doc Hurley had a big influence on you as far as, uh, you know, getting you prepared for leadership and life in general. Well, you know, I, I, uh, I started uh, Norcom as a freshman in 1953 
53. And it was the same time that the new school out there on uh, Airline Boulevard opened. And that was the same year that Doc Hurley uh, came to Norcom as the football coach. Mm -hmm. Well, at that time, I was 13. I went out for football. You know, I was sort of a big gangling guy. And Doc Hurley, Horace Savage, and Bob Smith mm. sort of took me, as, you know, <laughs> as a project and say, we got to do something with this big guy. And, and uh, those three men uh, were very, very instrumental in helping me because I was an undisciplined uh, guy, you know, and, and, and I didn't bring a lot of polish. And they were able to work with me, train me, discipline, taught me uh, discipline and leadership and, 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 and helped me also uh, with, uh, with the, the, the football. Those uh, three men uh, in my life helped shape me and made me much more disciplined for the things that I would face later on in life. Mm. Mm -hmm. I knew that would be a, a would have some significance in, in how you ended up later on with a military career like you did. Leah, I know you have some uh, questions concerning b before before the colonel and the general will get into this military thing, <laughs> uh, which we probably will have to sit back and listen. Yeah, we'll have to sit back today. Today <laughs> we will have oh, to. No, no, no. <laughs> but um, General Short, <laughs> what moment uh, or what other teacher at the in the Norcom family inspired you during the time when you were there at Norcom High School? Well, you know, I, as I think of my time at Norcom, I was inspired. Every, all of us were inspired by Mr. Waters. Yes. <laughs> Our yes. But uh, uh, Mamie Vick, uh, Mrs. Waters, uh, uh, Mrs. Foreman, uh, John McGriff, but something happened my last year at Norcom. There was a teacher there that, that taught math, Jeanette Eason. Yes, Ms. Eason. Jeanette Eason uh, lived on Pinewell Street, uh, 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 Jim. Mm -hmm. And uh, she said, I want to see you, uh, Short. She, she walked up to me. <laughs> and if you didn't know her, she was kind of frightening. Yes. She, you know, she, she could be very, very sharp <laughs> with her words. And she said, you know, I'm proud of you in one way, but I'm disappointed with you in another. She said, you don't seem to have any goals and discipline in your life. Mm. And now you're going off to college. She said, but I'm going to give you one instruction before you leave. She said, I want you to learn Invictus. Oh, yes. And before you leave here to come back and tell me what you think it means. All right. Well, that was a tough assignment, you know. Mm -hmm. Out of the night that covers that me, me, you know, I had to learn yes. that. But not only learn it, I had to apply to the fact that she said, you know, you don't seem to have the discipline and the perseverance and the goals. And, and, and after I learned that, I sat with her and that became my philosophy in life. I used that uh, throughout my time at Virginia State, yeah. throughout my time uh, in the military, and also my time in industry, and I still use it. I use it, I've used it with my, my grandchildren, mm -hmm. and I use it on myself. And occasionally, uh, Dolores and I will pass words back and forth <laughs> on that. But uh, Jeanette Eason was very, very, very instrumental in helping me to form goals and a philosophy in life uh, that would uh, that would help me when I was faced uh, with obstacles. Well, General, what also do you think uh, we need to do in order to help those young people? We have young people who are serving in the ROTC in, in high school now, and um, who may, a, may need a little encouragement in some directions as to how they can get into the military and, and achieve the ranks that you two have achieved. Um, and what do they need to do in order to get themselves prepared for the military? Well, the first thing they need to do is listen to their parents and obey their parents. 
And if they don't have parents, they have to find adults that, uh, that, uh, that they respect and listen and listen to them. Then they need to have some personal goals in life. They also need to work hard and stay in school. Mm -hmm. Stay in school yes. and work hard. Don't just stay in school to say, here, I'm here today. Exactly. But stay in school so that you can learn reading, writing, and arithmetic, yes. and also that computer stuff, too. Mm -hmm. But you, you, they have got to, the, 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 the one thing that I found in myself is that I had to discipline myself over and above what my parents did and over and above what I got from others. I had to discipline myself because it always boiled down to what was in my head. Should I do that homework? Should I get back in at the time that my parents have told me? Should I do this chore? Mm -hmm. You have to discipline yourself. And in disciplining yourself, it also helps you to be able to obey and follow guidelines that are given to you by your parents, guardians, and your teachers, and people within your community. And one last, one last question before you all get into the military piece. Uh, after you did your service to the military, you came back home. And not only did you come back home, you also did a lot in the community upon your return, as far as bringing computers to IC Norcom High School, as well as serving as president of the Martin Luther King Steering Committee. Can you just share with us, and I know you, you and Dolores, you never like to talk about the great things you do in the community, the great things you do for people, but just share with the public so they can know some of the things you have done upon your return into the Portsmouth family. Well, you talked about computers. In my last uh, military job, uh, the, 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 there were many things that, that I discovered that you could do. And I discovered that as a defense organization, you could work with uh, schools in terms of providing computers and, comp and providing other electronic uh, de devices you know, to schools to help them. And one of the things that I was able to do, many projects that, uh, that finished and had surplus computers and other electronic uh, instruments, I was able to, to turn those over to IC Norcom and Norcom was able to use them, you know, uh, with the, 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 the kids. Yes. And uh, after uh, retiring, you know, from the military and then industry, uh, and then coming back uh, to Portsmouth, I was able to work with the coaches and to ensure that uh, our athletic teams uh, were rewarded for their excellence. We had a, uh, the first year we had the basketball team, won the district and uh, also the state tournament. We were able to help them uh, acquire uh, rings and jackets. In, in 93, just before I retired, the football team won the championship. Mm -hmm. We were able to assist them in acquiring uh, rings and jackets. And also uh, uh, band uniforms mm -hmm. and just generally supporting, you know, the alumni association yes, you have. so that they could do their job more effectively. Uh, you know, from time to time, I was called to help. And I thank God that uh, most of the time they call, we were able to provide some assistance. Always. You always did. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you. Leah. Thank you yeah. so very much for your, thank you for your service to the military, but thank you also to your service to the community as well. And I, and I like to say, you keep mentioning Dolores' name and Dolores is your, your lovely wife. And uh, she's also my classmate of 1972 out of I.C. Norcom, and we call each other cuz, and she's also the Portsmouth City Registrar, and we uh, recognized her uh, a few yes, months ago on this program. So I uh, want to shout out to Dolores. She's off camera, but I uh, want to give a shout out to her. And, uh, and she's going to thank you for calling her name. She's going to thank yeah. you for calling her name. You know, she doesn't like the spotlight at all. <laughs> well, too late now. So yeah, sweetheart, I, I just like to point out that, you know, and while at Virginia State, uh, you know, I met my first wife and, and uh, we were married for 44 years and uh, she passed away right. uh, from uh, cancer. 
And out of that marriage, we had uh, two children, a son and a daughter. My son is married and he has uh, three uh, kids, uh, two boys and a daughter. And my daughter is married uh, and she has five children, all of them hers. She has, <laughs> she has three girls and, and two boys and they live in Portsmouth. Okay. And yeah. of course, and of course, in 2007, uh, you know, Dolores came into my life, and uh -huh. you're talking about a reward. I'm oh. telling you, and a beautiful wonderful. wedding. I'm blessed to be wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Yes, yes, yeah. indeed. Uh, I want to just say this and, and segue into because uh, uh, the colonel appreciates this too. Uh, after you left uh, Virginia State and joined the military. You continue uh, uh, your educational, your education by uh, going to several schools while you were in the military. Oh, yeah. And the colonel talks about that often. If you're gonna yeah. go to school, take advantage of that opportunity while you're in the military, so you can walk away without college debt. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, that was uh, something you did, uh, and I'll let uh, the colonel sort of chime in here now because that's something that. Uh, he really uh, pushes. Well, you know what? Uh, first, I'll start with what a uh, statement that Leah talked about as far as uh, high school ROTC and its link to the military. <clears throat> and I will tell you, uh, <coughs> at least for the uh, United States Army, we don't use high school ROTC as a recruiting tool. We understand that investment in high school ROTC and the students that uh, participate, they statistically have a higher chance or a higher percentage of graduating uh, high school than those who don't participate in uh, ROTC. And uh, General Short was talking about having those parents, the uh, cadre in uh, high school R ROTC are the mama, the daddy of that child. And many times when that parent at home is out working or not working or not doing what they're supposed to. And so that, 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 that cadre is, is a substitute for them. And so I just wanted to let you know that. So it's not a direct link for recruiting, but there, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a, an investment that they spend multi tens of millions of dollars across this great country for uh, us to improve the educational uh, pursuits of high school kids. So I, just wanted, yeah, I, I yeah. think that's wonderful. And, and you know, and, 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 and you know the rewards yes. uh, that you reap by, from doing that. Yeah. They're great. Yes. And then uh, I think Slim talked about when well, he was leading into this uh, about ROTC and you being an ROTC graduate and mm -hmm. going to an HBCU school. And I believe that that is the, uh, uh, the number one uh, filler of officers for our military is in the ROTC because the academies don't graduate enough uh, mm -hmm. minority officers, black and brown mm -hmm. folks. And so we have to always look at our, uh, our uh, HBCU schools and uphold them. But before I get there, uh, General Short, you talked about your three mentors. One of them being Mr. Horace Savage. Yes. 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 Uh, Jessel Happens, I'm going to tell him you said hello. He lives across the street from my parents. Oh, he's oh. a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful man. Yes, a wonderful man. I love him. Yes. <laughs> and so I'm going to tell him. That you said hello when I see him. Matter of fact, I'm gonna drive out there this this uh, you know probably the day or tomorrow, and I'll try to go look him up and say hello to him. Okay. Yes, but anytime, uh, anytime they were doing something for Hard Savage, I tried my best to get back. Yes. And be yes. a part of it. Yes. So, uh, General, you know when you talk about your military career, and you mentioned a couple buzzwords: critical thinking and goals and objectives. Uh, how do you put that since you've retired? And I think that when we talked about earlier before the show started, our service never ends. Uh, how do you equate your mentor mentorship to others at this stage of your life? 
Well, you know, the, you, the, the ha having grandsons and granddaughters, I, 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 I get to do that up close and personal in the family. <laughs> But also uh, with 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 others, you're able to reach out. I, as an example, uh, when I was the commander of the Defense Information Systems Agency, I would invite uh, seniors and juniors, you know, from uh, the, some of the area high schools to come in, and uh, we would uh, go through uh, with them on problem solving. We would go through. Uh, with them on setting up uh, computer networks, and 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 in in other instances, just math, mathematics, and 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 physics, and it proved it proved uh, worthy because many of those kids were able to finish high school and college, and some of them even came back as civilians mm -hmm. in 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 those organizations, and I know that uh, those organizations. Uh, to some degree, are still flourishing and still uh, putting out quality individuals who later on come back and work within uh, the industry mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the military and Department of Defense. Yes, yes. So uh, the other next question I'd probably have you is, uh, I know you talked, uh, you know, the Secretary of Defense, uh, uh, the Honorable... Uh, Austin, Lord, Lord Austin the third. Yes, and uh, he talked about the 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 dread of senior officers at the general level, general officer level, and that shortage there. And how do we get? How do we make up that delta? Uh, of the shortage of general officers. Yes. Well, you know, you you know, I, I think about the 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 time when. I decided that I wanted to be a regular army officer mm -hmm. you know, from a commission. There were a number of uh, outstanding uh, black officers that were part of our ROTC cadre. And they took time not only to talk to us, you know, in the classroom, but also out on the athletic field you know, even in our dorms uh, sometimes. And, 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 and not only that, they invited their friends. And it seemed to me that there was just a plethora of outstanding officers. And what that did, that created in me further desire to want to be an officer. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and back to your question, I think what we have to do today, we got the, the junior ROTC, and the ROTC programs, you know, within uh, uh, high schools, we used to have the Boy Scouts, but I don't know what happened. They, right, I know right. instrumental in my life was I was a a a, a Boy Scout mm -hmm. in Celeste Baptist Church, and what that did, that sort of triggered in me the 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 idea that you need discipline in your life, and mm -hmm. you got to have uh, a, a discipline in order to do most anything. And I think now as we, as we look around, we have got to not uh, be spooked by all that's going on politically, you know, in terms of uh, going out and recruiting outstanding young men and, 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 and young women uh, for the armed forces. We have to go out and do that. I do that uh, now when I speak to uh, young groups. When I used to talk to some of the youngsters in church, uh, those who were uh, had were doing well, you know, academically in high school, I would tell them, think about the military mm -hmm. as a career. I said there are many things that you can do. You can you can broaden your education, mm -hmm. you can broaden your experience. You can travel. Mm -hmm. There are so many things that you can do that that are positive to your life and yeah. living. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and you know, that is a true statement. Uh, I went in the, into uh, the military the first time right after high school and I joined up. My father didn't even know because I remember going uh, on my graduation night and my father came in and says, oh, son, so what are you going to do now? And he threw it out on the bed, a bunch of money saying, here's your tuition. And I told my dad at that time, I says, you know what? 
dad, I'd mess up that money. And then I have already joined and I'm leaving and I'm going and joined, I've already joined the army. And so, uh, fast forward, uh, I went in, did my time, got out and went to North estate and then Hampton and then came back and then spent another 30 years in it. And so, uh, probably the best thing that I've ever did as far as life learning things and, and the same things that you talked about discipline and uh, and learning the critical thinking and enjoying life I benefited all these years mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you know and but the 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 thing that I, I do uh, see now and I'd like to ask you this is as you were coming up as a young officer coming from this area, from an HBCU school, when is the first time that you saw somebody that looked like you uh, <laughs> uh, at the uh, senior level? Well, you know, when, 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 when I, I was commissioned, I went in, there were 66 in our class. 45 of those were West Point guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the others were DMGs. I was the only African-American in, mm -hmm. in the, in my class. And uh, I used to be hard pressed uh, down at Fort Gordon uh, to see, you know, uh, uh, other blacks, you know, they'd, there'd be another class over there and you'd see that maybe be one or two in that. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, as I, as I, as I uh, got in and, and started uh, going through my assignments, uh, my first, the one out at Fort Raleigh, Kansas, when I got there, there were three African Americans mm -hmm. uh, there. And then uh, the, 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 when I went to uh, uh, Europe, uh, there must have been uh, in my organization uh, maybe a dozen. Mm -hmm. And then uh, later on, uh, you know, uh, uh, it seemed like as I went from one organization and one promotion, more blacks showed up. And then finally, you know, when I became a battalion commander, I went to the 101st, I ran into, I was the Lieutenant Colonel, I ran into a Colonel named Colin Powell. Oh, wow. Who was a brigade commander. Mm -hmm. You know, all of these things, you know, you could see, I could see the, the discipline and, and, and the structure and what have you was moving well. I think that was the a time when the military uh, was at its, uh, for me, it was at its best because uh, a, a lot of uh, those individuals, I think about my time in the 101st, uh, we had uh, four or five of us African-Americans out there, made general, of course, Colin Powell was, was uh, uh, four star and then we had a couple of uh, three stars and two stars. Mm -hmm. but now we, the, the, but now the question is now, in light of all of the, the things that are not so positive going on, how do we bring that back to young men and young women and yeah. get them, uh, you know, thinking about a military career? It's going to take, it's going to take creative thought and it's going to take uh, uh, people like our, our current secretary of defense, Mm -hmm. You know, going around and encouraging others, you know, to stand up and talk about right. it. Yes, yes. And go out to the school, mm -hmm. go out to the high schools, colleges Colonel, and universities and speak. Yes. Colonel, let me step in since he made that point uh, right quick, uh, because as far as how can we uh, get back to that, one of the things, one of the uh, ways I, I believe we can get back to that especially here in the city, of course, is letting our young folks know, know our history and know people, yes. the careers of people like General Shaw. You know, and we were talking earlier, as I was researching, I, I went back and saw some, um, some C-SPAN uh, videos or footage <laughs> of uh, the general yeah. uh, giving a report and President Clinton and <laughs> Vice President Gore standing behind him. Yes. And then on another occasion, I saw him uh, testifying before a Senate committee on, on the BRAC committee. What, am I correct? BRAC committee was the that? BRAC, Base Realignment and Closure. Right, and which was a, a big deal back there. And I think the more that we know about our local uh, people that are making history, 
I, I think that's all because when I first went to Union, I'll just throw this in there. What, what gave me a sense of, of more pride that I got from Norcom was when I got there and we had to take all these black history courses. And I started learning about people beyond George Washington Carver and Booker T. Washington and know how much we contributed mm -hmm. to this great country. Yes. And I think if we know, if, if the kids know the history now and, and know people right here in the city of Portsmouth that they, they can feel and touch, I, I think that would help bring back a sense of pride yes. and, and maybe improve that. And mm -hmm. I'll throw this question in here. When you were going through all that, uh, when did the reality set in of all the history making, I guess, the history <laughs> making moments that you were involved with? Yes. Well, you know, the, the, uh, I, I, can, I, I can recall uh, when I became commander of the Defense Information <laughs> Systems Agency. Aside with that, I also became commander of the White House Communications Agency. Mm -hmm. And as such, you know, I worked for uh, uh, two presidents, George H.W. Bush and William uh, Jefferson uh, uh, Clinton. Mm -hmm. uh, but also in those jobs, I had the opportunity to to get out and 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 and, 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 and meetings, you know, in and around, uh, you know, the, the 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 White House. And in and around, uh, uh, you know, the 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 the, the other uh, other defense and and governmental institutions, and 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 what this did, you know, it, it showcased you. And from that, I used to have uh, the high school principals and individuals from the colleges say, "Can you come over and mm -hmm. speak to our kids?" Mm -hmm. And and each time I got an opportunity to do that, I tried to do it because it made a difference. And 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 in doing that, I got a lot of the kids out of the the, the Howard into our intern program. Mm -hmm. And some of those individuals stayed in that program and ended up uh, being GS 15s and 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 what have you within the government. Mm -hmm. So the opportunities are there, but you know we have to take them, and 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 we have to understand that what's going on around us. Just like everything that's going on around us now, sometimes that can sink you a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, you see, you see, you know, all of the stuff that happened on the 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 sixth of January. You see about the voting. You hear about all these other things, and it says, and sometimes if you're not careful, you can say, well you know, why should I exert myself? But you should, because that's the only way that we're going to overcome that, is getting in there and working and showing the, the, the younger people that it is worth getting behind, uh, you know, the, the United <laughs> States and, and democracy and our constitution and yes. pushing it forward and then trying to make it equitable for everybody. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. General, what do you think, um, what have you noticed as the reception for the new, um, I, I'm just at a loss of his name right now, the gentleman who took over um, in, I guess I'm trying to make sure I have the um, position correct, who's taken over the military. Oh, Secretary of Defense. Yes. I'm yeah, sorry, I had a, Lord, I had, a Lord, moment, I had a senior moment there. Please forgive me, okay? Yeah, his name is Lloyd. Austin, Austin, Lord, Austin. What, what do you think his, his reception has been? What have you heard? What are you hearing? How are they receiving him as Secretary of well, Defense? You know, it, it, at first, I started listening to the wrong group, and they were saying, well, he didn't have enough time. Right, you know, right. And, and, but then I got to thinking. I said, all that this man has done, yes. you know, yes. he is eminently qualified you know, for that uh, position. And you know he's uh, the, the I can remember uh, when uh, when I was just about ending my military career, I think he was working uh, in a job. He was a colonel at that time, promotable, working in a job uh, directly supporting uh, Colin Powell, who at that mm -hmm. time, you know, was the the chairman of the Joint Chiefs. 
and uh, and 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 I was impressed with him because he was a big man, and mm -hmm. and, and, and and you know he didn't didn't bow or what have you. He looked you right in the eye, mm -hmm. and he told it you know straight. He told a, a good straight story, and I said this guy is going to go places. Uh huh. And I've been I, I have listened to him since he's been in the position of Secretary of Defense, and I think it was a wonderful choice. Yes. I think. And I think it will be individuals like him and several other uh, generals that we have in there that will once again bring back, uh, you know, the, 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 the attraction, you know, to the military, to attraction, to being an officer uh, in the military. Right, right. You know, th that's a key point too, when you look at other senior officers, and I always looked at it and uh, that senior officers have to be out there to talk about and not be afraid to talk about diversity mm -hmm. and, uh, and what does diversity bring to the overall system or the organization because diversity strengthens our organization and too long, especially during the uh, last four years, uh, diversity was a no-no. You couldn't speak of it because they used it uh, because it came from the White House saying diversity was a bad word. It was uh, a, a uh, race-based uh, tinge to it. And so, uh, but it also, and, and as I digress here, <laughs> uh, when General Short, you was talking about when you was going through your assignments, you saw three African-Americans here, two here, this and that, and those numbers, and you know what, what the key point is that they were all less than the fingers you got on one hand. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and so that's, and then even in my own career, uh, when I got promoted to uh, 06, uh, and I'm an Army nurse, you know, I was the uh, seventh African American uh, Black male to be promoted to 06 in our nation's history. That's, mm -hmm. that, that pyramid was tight. We threw a lot yeah. of, a qualified people off the off the uh, promotion range yes. to get to where I was at. And I remember going to Fort Stewart and I was the only, the only uh, 06 of color in a division. The mm -hmm. only. Something's wrong with that picture. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the, the, when you think about it, I think about uh, when I did uh, my second battalion command, I commanded in the 101st. Well, in the 101st, I had a black deputy, and I had uh, of the, the the four battalions, I had uh, two black battalion commanders, mm -hmm. and I had at least uh, uh, three or four field grade officers, you know, S3s, S4s, and what have you, within that unit. And also, when, when I did my brigade command at the 3rd uh, uh, Signal Brigade out at uh, you know, Fort Hood, Texas, I also had a Black uh, deputy out there. Mm -hmm. you know, and, 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 and we displayed ourselves mm -hmm. <laughs> as, as, as much as we could, you mm -hmm. know, but, but mainly through just good performance. Mm -hmm. yeah. I used to tell God that yeah. you really, really... You really want to shine, just perform well and have yeah. discipline and have discipline in your life and always the, the 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 what I tell young people, seek excellence in everything that you do. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Seek excellence in everything that you do. Don't do one thing well and say, Well, I'm gonna uh, slough off on the other thing. Mm -hmm. Seek excellence in everything that you do. Right. James. Let me uh, be better than James. Uh, let me uh, jump in just for a minute. I just looked up at the clock and we're, we're past. We just have to close out the radio portion of this, but we will continue on Facebook Live right here on Zoom. So uh, I just want to say thanks all the listeners on WGPL 1350 AM for listening to us today uh, with our special guest, Lieutenant General Alonzo Short. And stay with us, Facebookers. Uh, we're going to continue the conversation uh, like we're going. So. <laughs> I just want them to hold that thought. So I, I don't know, Colonel, if you want to do your spiel or you want to yes. do it later or do it now. 
Well, yes, and, and for those 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 folks that are out there in Electron lands, we also have to uh, pay our bills. And, and so if you like what you're seeing, uh, we are always seeking uh, sponsorships or donations, and you can send it to uh, Portsmouth Coffee Talk at P.O. Box 7664, Portsmouth, Virginia, and it, the zip code is 23707, and, we're, and, and give us a shout out in our email, and Slim will give us our email. At the email is PortsmouthCoffeeTalk at Yahoo.com. That's Portsmouth Coffee Talk at yahoo.com. Okay, we will continue uh, the conversation. Uh, we were going. Don't remember who was talking last. Okay, like James, I just have one thing. Uh, Patsy Cavanis Hines just wrote on Facebook that she wanted to, she and Tyrone Hines would like to thank General Short for the jerseys that he has supplied to the Westmoreland Children and Youth Association for years. So I just had to let you all know that he continues to serve, continues to give back to the community as well. And also before we get back into the military talk, I, I really want to salute all individuals who have served in the military, those who've given their lives for this country, uh, especially uh, all of my family members who served, but especially my cousins, Leon and Samuel Bush, who served on the USS California when it was bombed in Pearl Harbor. And mm. they sent back notice to my uncle Leon that his, both of his sons had died on the USS California in Pearl Harbor. But it just happens that they later found Leon who was alive. And I think that might've been about the last time they started letting family members serve together on ships. But we salute all military individuals out there who've served our country and we just salute you and we thank you for your service. Yes, and I'm gonna be selfish and, and thank my father, uh, James, James A. Overton, who served in the U.S. Navy uh, Shore Patrol over on Church Street. That was like a battle <laughs> field. But uh, that that service uh, ended up paying for his law school uh, degree. Mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. <laughs> it served him well later in life as well. So just wanted to give a shout out to uh, Judge Overton for his yes, service. Yes, yes. And, and I'd like to give a shout out to my, my, uh, my father, uh, Thomas H. Chapman Sr., he was actually, he was the second uh, radar man, African-American radar man in the Navy. And my, also my uh, grandfather, uh, Lawrence James, who also served. So, and now uh, fast forward, uh, my daughter is a captain in the United States Army. Uh, my uh, station up at, uh, at Bethesda going to getting her doctorate as a psychiatric nurse practitioner. And my daughter who has also served She's done her time, but she's a veteran. She's a pharmacist paid for by Uncle Sugar, meaning the Army. And I also commissioned my wife, and who is an OBGYN nurse practitioner, and she did her time in the reserve. So uh, we are a family of service. And actually, my son uh, works for DIA in civil service. So we are a family of service. So, uh, yeah, I'd like to thank all those veterans. And my family, sir, we want to thank you. We want to my thank you for your outstanding general, service. Without mentioning that my father served in the Army Air Force, and both brothers served over 33 years in the Air Force, and all of my cousins and all who served within the military uh, family, we salute each and every one of you. Amen. Well, Amen. Can, can you imagine being at the colonel's table, uh, the dinner Amen. table, all the military <laughs> uh, on Thanksgiving? Mm. What kind of yeah. you with all that kind of military? Yes. Uh, guys, I want to ask you a question uh, and just throw this in here before we go. Uh, not before we go, but uh, it's, it's a lot of talk about the treatment of, of our veterans, uh, especially our veterans. Uh, active, not active duty, the wounded veterans. Yes. I um, have to rely on the veteran hospitals and things like that. So you get mixed stories as, as a civilian. Mm -hmm. What exactly going on? Are they getting uh, what they deserve as far as treatment? Or is, is, is it something that's lacking there? Can, can uh, you all enlighten us on that? You know, I can, from 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 uh, my point of view, when when uh, when my military career was over, somebody even asked me, "Al, do you have any interest in, in the Veterans Administration?" And I said, uh, "Not really. I have a I have other uh, plans." Mm -hmm. You know, the 
I don't think you can do too much for our veterans out there the, because many of them have have sacrificed an awful lot. Yes. Uh, and mm -hmm. and they've, they've sacrificed their lives and they've left spouses and children back here that need uh, to be supported. I think the, the emphasis uh, on the has to be and pressure has to be kept on the Veterans Administration to do all that it can for uh, the veterans and their families. Yes. Now, I don't think, I remember when Senseki uh, was in as the, 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 mm -hmm. the VA, he started out doing a great job, but he had so much to do that when the inspectors went out, they found such things and such uh, ill report that mm -hmm. he ended up getting fired, yet he was doing a great job. Mm -hmm. So I guess the, 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 the thing that I always say about the Veterans Administration, don't wait until you find something. You have to go looking for things, just like they mm -hmm. find sometimes housing with mold in it and, yes. and what have you, with, with uh, rodents. Mm -hmm. You have to, uh, uh, don't wait for the inspection. You have to go out and check these things to make sure that the veterans and their families are being treated properly. Make sure that that health support is what it should be for them, because too many times you'll have stories that somebody will go out and see somebody sitting on the park uh, bench, and it's a veteran, and they have a story, you know, about not getting uh, treatment. A lot of times, maybe they didn't go, but still, it's that kind of thing that has to be dealt with, and the problems have to be solved in order to put the Veterans Administration and the Veterans Hospitals back in a positive light. Mm -hmm. uh, Jim, I think it's something uh, that you, we, we're going to be working on when Jesus returns. Yeah. We're going to yeah. still be trying to figure out That's how true. we can improve it because yeah. you're going to always find a problem. So it's something that requires continuous hard work. Yes. And I echo that because, you know, the, the Veterans Administration is the largest healthcare system in our country. And with that, we have, uh, there's a bureaucracy uh, in, embedded in it. And then when you put in that bureaucracy, because it's over and it's, it's, they exist in every 50 states and all our territories, then the politics get into it. And then, so we'll get a politician here and there, we'll say, we'll build a new building. And then they don't think about, we don't have enough providers to go in, auxiliary staff to go in said uh, 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 facility. And so we're always behind the eight ball servicing our uh, the great veterans. And like General Short said, well, there's never enough that we can do, but yeah. we have to keep trying. Mm -hmm. it, it, has to, it has to be an urgency all the time because yeah. it is. It it's is. Just a is this another uh, situation or case where elections matter? Oh, it does. Yeah, it does. Yeah. As far as the veteran situation, you, know, you mentioned politics. Yeah. And, you know, I, I would think sometimes you want politics out of certain things, but you mm -hmm. can't get around that as far as the veterans. So you just have to make sure the right people are in place to, to uh, keep that kind of pressure that's needed. Uh, uh, without, without making this into a political thing, you know, we, we have all witnessed. Uh, some, some, some politics that's got all of us wondering now. Yes. Mm -hmm. you know, what's going on? What are we going to do? Yet at the same time, we can't sit back on that. We have to move out and do what we can do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have to take the initiative. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, you know, you could sit and 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 you can watch. Uh, uh, channel eight and, and channel sixty four, and, and 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 all of that, and it'll drive you nuts. It will. It will. Yes. And yes. it's also, you know, President Biden has a large chunk of money oh. in that bill that he's trying to get passed that yeah. will help to mediate some of the uh, problems that we're experiencing yeah. with the Veterans Hospital. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, this 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 is why the subject of voting is so critical. Yes. You know, I, I, I hear the positive uh, side of it all the time from my sweet uh, sweetheart in the other room. <laughs> but uh, 
we, we have to insist almost that people get out and vote. Mm -hmm. And even, even if the road is made a little bit more difficult, we still have to be able to travel that road and vote. Yes. Voting is, more, is, is going to become more critical now than perhaps it's been in a long time. Yes. Yes. Indeed it is. General, getting back to you, um, how, how easy was that transition <laughs> from the military into the corporate world? And uh, how much did that military career help you in making that transition? Well, you know, the, the, I spent the, 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 the 33 years in, in, in communications. I was in tactical and fixed uh, communications. Uh, uh, next to the last job that I had, I had uh, 46,000 military and civilians uh, in that command. That was the Army's Information Systems Command. And we put in the, the, the communication systems for all of the Army bases, every Army base and, 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 and the Army, uh, you know, uh, in, in, in the field. You know, so we, 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 we sort of did it all for them. And then when I left that job, I went to the Defense and Information Systems Agency, and we did the same thing, you know, for the DOD, the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, other words, the, 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 the joint organizations. So, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's it's a critical. I, I think I've lost the the the, the, the point that you wanted the, 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 on that. Uh, oh, I, I was talking about the the transition. Yeah. How, um, and I think you you were answering that. I was saying how uh, important was the uh, yeah. service in the military? How how did that help the transition? Oh, oh yeah, oh, absolutely. You know the. The the, 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 the the kinds of things that I did, you know, for the military, what I did when, when I retired, I came right out and, and, and I did them, you know, in the corporate world. The first job that I held, I took a partnership in a small company called Microsystems. And what Microsystems did, it provided information technology services, you know, the, 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 uh, to uh, the industry, to the government and what have you. Uh, when I joined that company, you know, we were about a $600,000 company. And then we ended up at, at about a $7 million company. Yeah. And then, then I joined Lockheed Martin, where I was the vice president, you know, of an information technology uh, sector and, and, and a program management office. I stayed with them uh, for five years. And then when I left them, I joined a, a, a company called Houston Associates, Whitney Houston's mm -hmm. half brother, and uh, and uh, the the information technology. We went from roughly about a thirteen million dollar company to a fifty five million dollar mm -hmm. company. So the things that I did in the military, that I learned in the military, the management and the leadership, all mm -hmm. of that was very, very helpful to me for the jobs that I had out in, in, in industry. Mm -hmm. Plus with all the connections you make, because- There, there, there you go. There you Absolutely. go. Absolutely. And I'll, I'll summarize that. Say the connections you make because you're out uh, in, in, in the private sector giving speeches and this and that, talking to people, those connections are lifelong. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. you know. Even no, you, you, you're, you're absolutely right. The, the, you make all kinds of connections. And, and if you're going to stay in the industry, it, certainly it helps. It yeah. does. It does. But, you know, but I will add, though, even though you, uh, we talk about connections in the business world and private sector, but those lifelong uh, connections that you make uh, while in the service, and, I, and, and I'll say from my own standpoint, and I'll say for you, people that you went to uh, see so officer basic camp, you could probably step in. There's not a city in this country that I could go to and I don't know somebody. Absolutely. That I could pick up the phone and just have dinner Absolutely. or sit over their house. And it's probably the same with you. Same way, same way. You same know, way. The, the, the individuals that, that uh, many of them, are in, some are in politics, mm -hmm. some are still in the industry. And some like me have, uh, have rolled over and retired. 
<laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. But those lifelong uh, relationships stay oh. with you forever. And that's one thing I would say about the military, that it does not exist anywhere in, in yeah. not even in the privacy, but the military gives you that. And that's one thing I think Slim was alluding to when he talked about that. You know, the, 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 the one thing we hadn't talked about, the, the, the military, uh, you know, when, when, when President Truman signed Executive Order 9981, mm -hmm. and that is eliminating the discrimination, mm -hmm. you know, out of the, 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 the military based upon race, color, religion, and, 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 and origin. Yes. That, the, 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 it should be studied because I think that went as about as well as it, as, it, as it could be in terms of what the military had to do, you know, its mission. Mm -hmm. the, 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 that executive order and the integration of the military, I know when, from the time that I came in in 1962, yeah, we still had discrimination, but the military was, was in, in terms of the way it operated, and in terms of the way it dealt with the discrimination and educating the people about how they must perform and act now was outstanding. Mm -hmm. I can say it was outstanding. Did we have problems? Sure we did. But we never had a problem that we didn't attack and seek to get a solution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I would like to see that in our, in, in our government Thank a little you. bit more now. Sure. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Uh, and that is a true statement, but uh, yes, our government and, and actually put it past, I'd like to see that in society. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, our society is so, uh, it's gone off the rails. It yeah. has gone off the rails, what's happening in this country. Yeah, yeah. well, you know, you they, that I've been looking at the Tulsa, looking <laughs> at, at the, the movies on uh, yeah. the... The, 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 the situation, the massacre in, in Tulsa. Tulsa, that's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. You know, all of these things, it should send a signal to us out here now. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and I think to some people, it is. I'm listening to some people, it is. But mm -hmm. then for others, it's, it's like it's con completely missed their brain. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. In terms of understanding. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. One thing before we, I know we're getting to the end of the show is uh, when we're giving out shout outs and I'd like to give two more shout outs to HBU uh, school uh, graduates, a mm -hmm. uh, Lieutenant General Rochelle, Norfolk State grad, yeah. and Lieutenant General Williams, Hampton University. Yeah. Uh, we always look at, and I've always looked at, uh, at the two of them. And I remember I was at, uh, when uh, General Rochelle was up at uh, Fort Knox, and mm -hmm. I'd, I'd be on campus, and I always had my Norfolk State uh, jersey on, and I'd see him in PX, and I would tell him, <laughs> I would tell, I would tell him, I says, "You can't do this like I can do this," <laughs> <laughs> and I'd pull up my shirt, and say, "Yeah, Norfolk State," <laughs> you know, because he was uh, at the time he was in uh, charge of recruiting command, and he really couldn't do, you know. Favor yeah. one over another, yeah. but I, yeah. you know, I, I like throw that at him. <laughs> so it's all good. You know, I think I think all of us would say that the, the the military is still a very very good deal. It's a good deal for us as individuals, and it's a good deal for our country. Yes, you know, to to bring in the the various perspectives and the various experiences that we've had, you know, in the from the the the, the black community from the HBCUs and, mm -hmm. and what have you. Mm -hmm. General, I had a quick question um, in light of the insurrection that took place in, on the Capitol um, on the 6th of January. Um, you know, they, they realized that a lot of military leaders were a part of the group, the insurrectionist group. Mm -hmm. What do you think, what, what impact is that having on the military? Are you hearing anything and I know that they're recently finding that they're finding on some of their social media pages, some of the people serving the military uh, who are cheering on what has taken place with the insurrection. 
Well, you know, the, the, my personal feeling uh, on that, anybody who participated in that, they should be dealt with in accordance with the activities that they performed while they were in there. Mm -hmm. If they were part of tearing down and breaking and what have you, they should be dealt with mm -hmm. because those were criminal acts and they should be dealt with uh, by that. I, a lot of investigations are going on now and they have not published all of the names of, you know, and, 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 and where they belong and organizations that they mm -hmm. belong to. But I think if they have uh, people in there who are associated with the military or other governmental uh, organizations, yeah, yeah. it should be dealt with seriously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they have members- Very of seriously. Yes, yes, yeah. I agree with you there. Well, you know what, Leah? And I know the politicians and the pundits on TV talk about, they use the word insurrection. Mm -hmm. uh, I take a step forward and just call it like it is. That was a coup, an attempted coup on our system of government. Yeah. And we have to call it like it is mm -hmm. and, and stop using, stop, stop peddling this and say that was an attempted coup. And those who were in uniform or prior uniform, mm -hmm. they have to be dealt with. They have to be dealt with. Harshest because yeah. they knew better. Exactly, yeah. exactly. I mean, yeah. they take the oath to defend their country. You yeah. take the oath to defend. Well, you know, the, yet you want to turn your country down. I, I think I think some of our political brothers and sisters are trying to save their party, but what but what they don't realize is that they're going to do irreparable damage to everything else. Exactly. Doing that. Exactly. Yes. yes. I even go further and says uh, it was a traitorous uh, oh. event. And uh, and I, I'll even go back there. I'll just say it was a traitorous event. It was, those were traitors to our country. Oh, yeah. What would they have done had they had the, had the Pelosi been able, had they attacked them? What would they have done if, if, if they had run into Pence? Exactly. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Yeah. What would they have done if they'd run into Mitt Romney? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm You know? Yeah. You think they would have survived? Maybe. Yeah, they would not. Maybe not. Right. Yeah. Yes. And, and and now they just want to put it behind them. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh, well, you know, the, 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 to, 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 we've, we've come to the point where some people will do almost anything to save the party. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. To save the party. Mm -hmm. One day, one day I'll say that this guy is terrible, and the next day I will say, "Well, <laughs> he's okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's passable." Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yes, yeah. that's terrible. We don't and want this journal to, into a political thing. But, you know, <laughs> we got one out there now that we're dealing. With. Yes, yeah. yes, all yes. of us. Mm -hmm. Yes. And General, you you said uh, you mentioned earlier that the military is still a pretty good deal. And I think a lot of uh, the young folks that are considering military career, just like you had to go through your preparation through Norcom and, and Virginia State and getting ready, uh, they really have to prepare now because it's not, uh, you know, the, going into the military is a little different now, just like uh, UN communications, it's a lot different now with the cyber security and, and all the different mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh, technology uh, and, and skills that you have to have to even qualify to go into mm -hmm. the military now. Mm -hmm. So uh, the young people have to start because I think, uh, Colonel, I think one time you were mentioning how things can disqualify you early before yes. you even get in the military if you have that stain on your record. Yes. So, uh, you know, so now you, the young kids, if you're thinking about it, you really have to be prepared or think about what, what's necessary in order for you to qualify once it's your time to go in. Yes. Yeah, because one, uh, those waivers that you could have done years ago don't exist anymore. They don't uh, exist. They don't exist. And so uh, if, you, if, you, if you're a young person out there, you think about, uh, and you're hanging with the wrong crowd. Uh, I always said, trouble will catch up with you. You may be Amen. a good kid, but Amen. if you're hanging with the wrong crowd, trouble will catch up with you. Amen. And then when it catches up with you, the boys and all the, the, the people that you're hanging with, they will be like church mouse or like cockroaches. <laughs> you won't true. be able to find them. That's yeah. true. 
And then so it will affect you down the road. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the, I would say the, 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 the a young man or a young woman have got to have a creed by which they live. You know, just like I said something, I said, obey parents, mm-hmm. stay in school, study hard, seek excellence in all that you do, respect others. And I throw another one in there, keep Christ in your life, mm-hmm. seek a healthy lifestyle and help others when you can. And also learn how to discipline yourself. Right. Discipline yourself when it comes to your study habits. Discipline yourself when it comes to your finances. Discipline yourself when it comes to everything that you do. That's the only way that you're going to be able to effectively lead and show others that there is positive things that can come out of having an ordered life. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Indeed. And, and as we come to a close, uh, General Shaw, we'd like to thank you for uh, your very informative presence here this morning. And we will be remiss if I didn't mention some of these things, some of the, uh, uh, <laughs> some of the awards that we uh, received, uh, the Legion of Merit, the bronze star medal with oak leaf cluster. I guess you all can explain what that means. <laughs> uh, it means you got more than one. <laughs> more than one. Okay. Explain mm-hmm. some of those things that go across your chest. Uh, National yeah. Fence Service Medal, parachutists and air assault badges. That, that means you jumped out of planes and- Jumped out of planes. Yeah. <laughs> My cousin would love that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Meritorious Service Medal, Oak Cluff, Oak Leaf Clusters, along with that as well. And I probably left off some more, but I, I wanted to make sure people knew that uh, those uh, more than 30 years you served didn't go without you being rewarded for all the things you did while you were serving. Exactly. So and we here at Coffee Talk like to give you a Coffee Talk salute. A salute to you. Salute. Thank you. Thank you. I, I also want to go back, Leah, and thank you for honoring, uh, you know, my 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 brother. Yes. Whom I love, whom I love dearly. Thank I you know that. that. I and know. Thank, thank, thank you, thank you for for having me on this uh, program. I think well, we, that, well, we we thank you to agreeing to advance to this new technology and taking the time to learn how to do it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, let me just say, you did a magnificent job. Mm-hmm. And I, I'll, I'll talk to Dolores about it later, but I, I do appreciate your agreeing to uh, be on this morning because you have offered so much to the city, so much to the country, and you continue to give to the city, to the country, and we, we appreciate you so very much. And I know the Norcom family especially appreciates you, and I'm just sorry that we're at a point in time where the, the young people at Norcom don't have a chance to meet individuals like you and Bismarck Marek and those individuals who've given so much to each and every one of us. And again, I want to say thank you, thank you, and thank you for your service. You're quite welcome. And we must figure out new ways to to make our youngsters listen. Exactly. We just can't can't get frustrated and give up because they're not. We have to figure out new ways to approach it. Exactly. Mm -hmm something that will capture their interest. Exactly. <laughs> like, like we were joking one time, we're gonna have to do some TikTok videos. <laughs> <laughs> we get the general in well, the TikTok you know, video. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Hey. Just get you know, that the, first and then. <laughs> we, 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 have, we have to use our imagination because you know we, you, you can see how things are, are moving. Exactly. You, you know, the, the, the old ways are not going to uh, get it. Exactly. So you have to figure out new approaches. Exactly. You know? That's so true. Even for even for some of us who are who are, who are getting into the sunset years. Yeah. It's just so important to insert that history and make sure that they are aware of the history. Because uh, I'm convinced that the more they know, the more pride is, is instilled. The more seeds we plant, that yeah. will they yes. will continue to grow later in life in them. Just like the seed of being a greyhound. <laughs> but you know, well, you know I, 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 again, I think about Jeanette Eason. Jeanette mm-hmm. Eason frightened right. me into developing a philosophy that has carried me 
through my life thus mm -hmm, far. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's perseverance. Mm -hmm. You know, perseverance. Hang in there. Don't remind, don't matter how tough it gets. Exactly. You, still, you hang in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah. you know, but, you know getting back to what James said. All too trusting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> James, getting back to what you said about our youth being inspired once they have an opportunity to meet individuals uh, uh, like the general. General, was Ambassador uh, Bismarck in your class or was he? He was behind me. He was behind you. Mm -hmm. But you know, when you think about people who are right here with us, and you know, when Bismarck came to the walk around that Norcom had, and he took me and said, a young lady asked him, says, um, are you named after the street or is the street named after you? You know, <laughs> and I mean, it's just the, 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 the fact that the young people, they just don't know, you know? Yeah. And I introduced a young lady to him while we were at the walk around. And I said, this is Ambassador Bismarck Marek. And she says, oh my goodness, I live on Bismarck Marek Street. <laughs> you know, you're the person my street is named after. And she yeah. was so surprised, you know, but the young people, yeah. they don't know. And we do have to have an avenue of providing them with this information so they can know mm -hmm. who these yeah. individuals yes. are who've given so much for them to be where they are today. Yes, yeah. yes. Absolutely, yeah, well, hopefully I agree with you. I agree with you. And we have to put a... Amazing. High premium on education because exactly. it's becoming critical. Exactly. It's becoming critical. It's already critical. It's already yes, critical. Yes, it is. Yes. Yep. Because one, one thing we talked about, Slim talked about seeds and Leah talked about investments in our, our youth. Because one, in the, in the summary of that is that youth of today is going to be us tomorrow. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I'm telling you. That's yeah. true. It's going to be us tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So we need to make those investments in education yes. and, and, and lifestyle and, and instilling that, uh, you know, those uh, and, 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 and also mentoring them so they and keeping them on a straightened path. Yes. 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 Absolutely. Yes. So Absolutely. again, uh, General, we thank you. Again, uh, th thanks for having me and, 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 and listen. Uh, you'll have something coming from me uh, to, to to help this effort too. Well, thank you. That's that's our goal is to, to share information and make sure that the word gets out there. So we okay. appreciate we appreciate your presence and uh, the Portsmouth Coffee Talk is here for our voice, our community, and our future. Thank you, everybody, for watching and listening today. And we'll see you next week when we will have our school board chairman, Cardell Patillo, Patillo yes. Jr. as our guest, as our special guest. And once thank again, we want to thank again. all of those who have served this country. We yeah. salute each and every one of you. We especially salute the two gentlemen who are with us on this morning, the general and the colonel. So we salute both of you for your service. Thank you so very much. I like to say to the Colonel and his entire family who's in your Yes, yes. Thank, yes. thank you for your services. <laughs> thank you. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, and they're still coming, aren't they? The grandkids are. <laughs> you know what? Instilling in there that sense of service. Because if we don't serve our country, then we won't have a country. So, yeah. yes. Indeed. And General Pastor Kevin is high and says, you're such an honorable man, making Portsmouth proud. General Short, thank you for all you have done and do. So you got a lot of thanks out there, General. Well, I, I thank uh, everybody for the prayers and for the well wishes because that, that encourages you to, mm -hmm. to do, want to do even more. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, we can do so much now from our home, so. <laughs> <laughs> Easier yeah. too. Thanks to modern <laughs> technology, right? <laughs> oh, I'm telling you. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay. This Take is care. What it's about. <laughs> okay. All right. See y'all. Take care, Dolores. All righty. Tell Dolores okay. I said hello. Goodbye, and and again, awfully nice being with you in this uh, uh, this medium that that we've been in this morning. Thank yeah. you so very much. And yes. we hope to have you back, General. Okay. Okay. Thank you, guys. Okay. Unplug, right? Uh, yes, I'm going to stop this.